Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dental Brush Up. My name is Martha Macaluso, and today we have a real treat for you. As part of our Inspirational Professional Series, we are honored to have Ms. Autumn Henning here with us. Now, Ms. Autumn Henning is a speech pathologist who has a lot of great knowledge and a lot of good stuff to offer. And Ms. Autumn is a certified licensed speech language pathologist with a certificate of clinical competence from the American Speech Language Hearing Association, ASHA. She is a certified oral facial myologist through the International Association of Oral Facial Myology, IAOM. She is an international board certified lactation consultant. She graduated from the University of Kentucky with a master's degree in communication disorders. Autumn is also currently appointed in a good standing as an assistant professor with the voluntary faculty series in the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at the University of Kentucky College of Health Sciences. She was a founding board member for the International Consortium for Oral Ankylophrenula Professionals, ICAP. Autumn is a member of the American Academy of Private, uh, Private Practice in Speech Pathology and Audiology. And she has completed specialty continuing education, including the Beckman Oral Motor Vital Stem Tummy Time Method, Understanding the Oral Facial Complex, and Foundations in Myofacial Release for Neck, Voice, and Swallowing. She has experience working in the school system, early intervention, an ABA center, and outpatient clinics, including a nationally award-winning intensive feeding program. Autumn specializes in oral facial function and development throughout the lifespan. She works with both infants and adults. Now, Autumn has also been invited to speak for many prestigious conferences and organizations, providing excellent research, engaging graphics, case studies, and therapeutic techniques to keep everyone nice and involved. And a few of the organizations' conferences she has presented for include the International Association for Orofacial Myology, Annual Convention, Feeding Matters International Pediatric Feeding Disorders Annual Conference, the American Laser Study Club Annual Symposium, and the International Consortium of Oral Ankylophrenula Professionals Inaugural Conference. Autumn also has experience presenting webinars. She has presented as part of Gold Learning's first Tongue Tie Symposium and Inara Health's first webinar online university. She has also written professional articles and been featured on podcasts, and she has trained thousands of professionals from varying fields internationally in her E3 model of care and flagship course, TOTS, Tethered Oral Tissues Specialty Training. And Autumn is uh, married to Dr. Zach Henning, and they have a beautiful daughter, uh, McKenna Grace Henning. They reside in Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, with their beloved cats. And her hobbies include traveling, reading, going to church, and any activity that involves the family. Wow, Autumn, thank you so much for joining us. It is a true honor to have you here with us today. What a fantastic bio you have. Um, again, it is our pleasure to be able to have you here and be able to share some of your knowledge with us and educate us about some of the latest advances that uh, you have to offer. Now, Autumn, uh, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got here. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our chat and um, yeah, I hope the audience uh, learned something that they can take back uh, to their community. Um, as far as how I got started on this journey, my background is speech pathology, and um, you know, I was always fascinated by the mechanics. So, um, why a child couldn't say a certain sound, or um, why swallowing was not going well, or um, different adaptive uh, compensations associated with that. And so I come from a background of medical and dental professionals. So speech pathology was kind of smack dab in the middle of that. But anyhow, I worked in an intensive feeding program and, you know, worked on um, kids from all over the country uh, with different feeding disorders and swallowing. So I, I developed my skills in swallowing and, 
and chewing and those type of mechanics there. And then I had a case where um, it ended up being a tongue tie. And that really opened my eyes and shifted my view. Um, no one could kind of, no one could figure out what was, what was going on with this little one. And um, I did a ton of research and, you know, Googling even. Um, and yeah, I was kind of the one that found that it was a tongue tie affecting her and sent her off um, for therapy and a tongue tie release. And um, it helped her a lot. So from there, uh, I kind of became the, the tongue tie specialist, if you will. And my colleagues and, um, you know, other professionals would call and say, Hey, what's, what's this tongue tie business? What, is, what, is, what, is, what do you mean tongue tie affects this, that, and the other? And I would always jokingly say, look, this isn't a 20 minute conversation. There's, you know, a whole, a whole um, vast array of knowledge and uh, functional skills that need to be assessed when it comes to this. Um, and so from there, I developed, I took note of what was working with my patients and what wasn't and, you know, what the outcomes were. And I kind of like honed my, my skills as far as um, walking a patient or a family through a tongue tie release and remediating their function. So that's when I developed my uh, E3 model care for TOTS training that I run around the country and give, and um, it's a lot of fun. I get to meet people from all over and different backgrounds. And, you know, we it's not just speech pathologists in the course. Um, it's dental hygienists and dentists and physicians even, um, OTs, and yeah, it's, it's really fun to have all those disciplines looking at it from different viewpoints in the same room. Oh, so yes. that's kind of my journey um, into, into this realm. And, you know, once I learned about, you know, tongue tie and um, how it affects feeding and speech, I saw a greater need in more of like the whole um, airway and orthodontic and, um, you know, craniofacial pain type issues. Because I, I would talk to a child's parents about it and they, their eyes would get big and they would say, oh, well, I have some of those things that you mentioned it could affect. And so that, that was where kind of my myo journey started was, you know, being able to address those other things and guide patients in that realm. Oh, awesome. So now, Autumn, can you tell us a little bit about your most recent projects? I know you have a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> a yes. lot of exciting stuff. Always, always. So yeah, um, I run a full-time private practice and we see the lifespan. So um, babies, like days old, all the way up and um, everything in between. So that keeps me really busy um, and we're growing like crazy, which is amazing. Um, it just kind of shows the need for these services out there um, and more awareness coming to the community and programs like this that help educate. Um, so yes, private practice is a full-time project for sure. Um, definitely, I th you mentioned ICAP. Um, I was part of the founding board for ICAP and so it, it's really the, um, it was the largest conference to date with multidisciplinary professionals talking about oral restrictions, tongue tie, lip tie, buckle ties. Um, so that was a really big project. Um, you know, everything from budget to recruiting speakers, to logistics, um, to mission statements, to websites. Um, and, you know, it was super challenging just because it was myself, um, a dentist in Australia, a lactation consultant in India, and a dentist in Canada. And so we, we joked, we said, from the four corners of the earth. Um, <laughs> yeah, so ICAP was a huge undertaking. Um, and, you know, it's been great to see it grow and flourish and continue on its mission. Um, currently, a few... Um, 
articles in in the works uh, for professional uh, association journals and things like that. Uh, not ready yet, you know. It's hard to find the time to do it all. <laughs> and then um, just launched a course with um, Dr. Ann Bynum. She's a pediatric dentist that I've worked with for a long time and actually did my tongue tie release and my daughter's. <laughs> but um, you know, TOTS training is really all about the background and the, the model of care. Plot the Tot, which is our new course, gives people kind of a roadmap to follow and, you know, how to set up your practice, how to actually collaborate with those other professionals, how do we communicate, um, troubleshooting, common issues that, you know, you may run into, how to actually implement that model of care in real world uh, times. So it, it follows three patients, um, a baby, a child, and an adult through their entire journey from evaluation and therapy to tongue tie release, the procedure, and then the after therapy all the way through. And so you can kind of see, you know, the, the whole journey for them. And so that's been a lot of fun. So we're about to offer our second one of that. Um, and then I have lots of course ideas um, in development, so stay tuned. <laughs> awesome. So now, Autumn, as a speech pathologist, what are the most important things you say dental professionals should be on the lookout with their patients, and how can they refer to uh, someone like you? Yeah, so, um, you know, you can tell a lot about a patient when they just come in your office. And so based on, you know, the way that their posture is, or, um, you know, you see the child with the pacifier, or the thumb in their mouth, or they're drooling, um, breathing through their mouth, um, any of those things are, are things that you would refer to. It could be a speech pathologist or um, a dental hygienist that has training in myofunctional. Um, definitely just, you know, making small talk with the patient and if you notice any um, speech errors, um, like a lisp or, um, you know, that's a common one, the R is a common one um, that are affected by myofunctional disorders. Um, and so, yeah, just, just, you know, when they take a drink of water, you know, notice where they're, you know, if they have a tongue thrust and their tongue is pushing out between their teeth, any of those things are, important to notice. Um, I would really love to see more dental professionals and therapy and speech therapy professionals collaborate because they are, there's that dynamic relationship. So the functionality of the muscles in the face and the coordination and strength and range of motion all affects speech. It also affects their dentition um, and then vice versa. If, you know, the structure isn't aligned and, you know, proper, that changes the way they say their speech sounds. And so, yeah, those are, those are important things to, to view. Oh, awesome. And I know that is very important also to be able to continue bridging that gap between the medical and dental professions. Um, it's obviously that's key, everybody collaborating together towards the benefit of the patient. And, you know, again, we're so thankful to have you here today because you're going to, uh, I know, teach us something you know, wonderful, share some of your knowledge with us. But now, Autumn, as one of our inspirational professionals, um, can you provide us with some words of wisdom for the dental community? So I would say, um, just kind of zoom your lens out. I know like you're, you're hunched over, you're, you're in their mouth and like you're, you're seeing that small frame. I would say zoom the lens out and look at some of those other issues. Look at their facial development. Um, look at their head posture listen to their speech, ask the parent questions or ask the patient questions. Um, it, you know, we are not isolated, you know, parts. All of these parts interconnect and make a whole person and affect their whole quality of life. So um, there are some great screening tools out there um, for, for professionals to use in the dental practice that can screen for myofunctional 
um, or speech problems or feeding problems. Um, so yeah, I would just encourage everyone, you know, reach out, go take courses, um, see, you know, network with people in your community. And I am guarantee you guys can share some things. I learn things from Dennis all the time, um, you know, because my training wasn't in that, but it's really helped me um, in my practice and helped me help clients. I would also say, um, be the two-year-old and ask why. And, you know, the two-year-old asks why, you give them an answer, they ask why again. And so to me, I'm a puzzle person and that's kind of how I came about to tongue tie and feeding and myofunctional disorders was asking those hard questions and why don't just make an observation and leave it. Um, so, you know, you see wear on the teeth. Yeah. Investigate further. Why? Why is there wear on the teeth? Um, could it be an undiagnosed airway issue? Um, and look further at that. Why are they having headaches, you know, five out of seven days a week or, you know, why does their, their, their voice sound like that? Maybe they're having reflux. Um, so yeah, looking at that whole interconnectedness for the well-being of the patient is what I would say. And I, I would also say anybody um, listening or watching this, um, you'll see my contact information at the end. You're welcome to shoot me an email if you have a question. Um, I can help you I'm happy to <laughs> awesome thank you so much autumn so now I know you have a delightful presentation for us so uh, we're gonna um, be uh, putting that on and uh, thank you for being with us again yeah thank you let's see so yes I'm autumn Henning and um, I'm with Chrysalis Orofacial, and thank you, Martha, for having me again. Today, I just wanna talk about myofunctional therapy, which is what my practice is focused on, and just share with you guys um, what that means. You know, none of us, you know, speech pathologists or dental hygienists are really taught much about this in school and um, in our education, and so it's really that, that um, postgraduate and real world experience and continuing education that we learn about this. And also just for any patients um, or potential uh, members of the community or public out there that may not know or have heard about myofunctional therapy. So this is just an overview of what it is, who it helps, the symptoms that we see and um, you know how it works. So. There we go. All right, so myofunctional therapy, breaking it down, myo is muscle, function, purpose, and role, and then orofacial, which is the mouth and the face. So that's what we do. We are scientists of the mouth and face and how those muscles work together or don't. And, you know, some muscles may be overactive, some may be underactive, some may be working but not in the right manner. And so that's what we tend to look at when we're looking, when we're uh, evaluating a client. So it teaches us how to breathe, um, eat and swallow and speak correctly if you're a speech pathologist. Um, so the main focus is creating that equilibrium uh, within the mouth and the face. When things are balanced and equal, that helps um, for proper dental alignment and craniofacial growth and proper function as far as, you know, eating and talking and breathing and all of this. So, yeah, it, it's that balance that dictates how our mouth and face uh, develops. So this, this little guy, you can see the difference in his um, oral rest posture. And so what that means is when I, I tell my kids <laughs> that I see, when your your mouth has lots of jobs, you know, giving your brother a kiss, um, eating, talking, all of those things. When your mouth is not doing those those jobs, when it's at rest, what should it look like? Your lips should be together, um, teeth very slightly apart. Your tongue should be all the way in the top of your mouth. 
uh, not, not pushing against your teeth, and then breathing through your nose. And so when oral rest posture, when those things are not happening regularly, it, it can come and be, be a myofunctional disorder. And that's our job to figure out why. Yeah, abnormal resting posture of the musculature, atypical chewing, uh, malocclusions, um, so crooked teeth, blocked nasal airways and speech problems are common things that um, Hansen defined for myofunctional disorders. But yeah, here we have, you know, the tongue, lips are apart, tongue is resting low between the teeth. A lot of times when you see that open bite, you can tell exactly where the tongue spins all the time. Uh, that persistent sucking habit, that could be for a lot of different reasons, but airway, maintaining an open airway with the tongue down and um, jaw forward. It could be um, for calming and stimulation if the tongue isn't doing its job and resting against the palate. Um, Kids will find, you know, their thumb, pacifier, or something else to get those calming neurotransmitters uh, going. And tongue tie can be one of the reasons for that. So it's really important to, you know, listen to a full history to get the gravity of what's going on and what their um, backgrounds look like. So this is an example of how the face grows when you're breathing through your mouth versus your nose. Nasal breathing has a lot of benefits. Um, you know, the nitric oxide in the nose, um, filtering and warming and humidifying the air. And so mouth breathing uh, changes the way the maxilla grows and therefore the um, mandible. So instead of things growing away from the airway and getting more room, you're growing long and narrow. And so, yeah, definitely like more of a flat mid face. Um, and so when we look at uh, positive uh, jaw structure and facial structure, you know, uh, the nose is straight. Lots of times when the palate gets high and narrow, it can relate to a deviated septum and then you get kind of the crooked nose and bump on the nose. And poor uh, cheekbone definition things like that. So what are some signs that we see? So again, like I talked about, you know, you can tell a whole lot about when somebody walks in, in your office, um, if they may have an issue. So lips apart, mouth open, drooling. If you notice dry and chapped lips, even if their lips aren't open at that moment, they probably are breathing through their mouth a good bit of the time. So any of those malocclusions, um, you know, over jet, probably tongue is pushing against those front teeth, um, crossbite, likely the tongue is not resting in the roof of the mouth and um, developing that wide uh, maxillary arch and palate. Um, open bite can be from that sucking habit or um, just the tongue resting between the teeth and low and forward. Yeah, lots of things that we can see just by looking, looking at them, um, that flatter face, longer face, um, asymmetry. Gallop tongue, the tongue with like the edges um, with, um, tells you that, hey, it's probably resting low in their mouth. Um, it is associated with sleep apnea as well and um, associated with dental crowding because it's actually making impressions on the tongue. The classic sign of tongue tie would be that heart-shaped tongue, but there's lots of presentations of tongue tie. It's really more about how it functions than what it looks like. But if you see a heart-shaped tongue, that's pretty the classic definition um, of a tongue tie. So um, likely that would be something that would cause an issue. Uh, let's see, grinding, um, wear facets on the teeth and tori. I, I tell people like, you know, yes, these tori are so-called harmless. They're not painful or malignant or anything. But um, think about when someone has osteoporosis. They tell them to do weight-bearing exercise because it builds bone. 
that's the same with tori is that um we get these new bone deposits because of clenching and grinding and so the increased force on the the teeth and the bone build build those extra bone mouth breathing can also inflame the tonsils just breathing through your mouth with um, non-filtered non-warmed air um, when the mid face doesn't develop fully um, you get venous pooling and so you can see under the eyes those dark circles I used to think those were like just hereditary and while some of these things do run in families um, it is a dysfunction of how the um, how the face is growing that you see that darker circles and venous pooling a long uvula is something interesting it's a sign of an airway issue when um, the airway collapses at night it pulls on that uvular tissue and then over time it elongates the uvula so these are all things that you know you can sometimes see just people in the mall walking around with or um you know your kids um see if their their lips are closed when they're asleep um or awake too for that matter it you know in the dental office your your prime view to look right down their throat and check their tonsils so um just doing some of those screening things are things that you can visibly see could really help somebody so some symptoms so when we have a poorly developed face and airway um many times we develop that forward head posture to compensate and open up the airway um when the tongue cannot go up and back to swallow it gains we we gain negative pressure by pushing down and forward using our cheeks and our lips and sometimes even forward head movement um, to gain that negative pressure for the swallow. Um, yes, sleep and airway issues. So the, the grinding, what we know now is that it, it creates more room in the airway and opens up that airway. And so um, we used to think it was more related to stress. And so asking questions about sleep and you Sometimes you have to dig about these questions like, oh, how do they sleep? Oh, great. They sleep 12 hours. Okay. Well, how old are they? You know, and 12 hours is like a lot of sleep for that age. Oh, and then they also take a nap in the afternoon or yeah, they sleep, but they wake up a lot or they're restless all over the bed. Those are all signs um, that we're not getting good quality sleep, even though the amount of sleep may be enough. Ear infections is a big one. Um, so when you have a correct swallow pattern, it activates the salpingopharyngeus muscle, which equalizes the pressure in the eustachian tubes. When that doesn't happen and you have a, maybe a tongue thrust swallow, that pressure is not um, regularly equalized, creates a vacuum, and you can get ear infections. So other things, um, you know, orthodontic relapse is a big one that I see. And, you know, what are braces? They're forces and pressures. Well, our mouth has natural forces and pressures. And so, you know, people that need orthodontia in the first place, many times it's because they don't have that balance. Um, many times, you know, the orthodontics is over and then they, you know, their teeth start shifting and heading back to the place that they once were because we didn't address the underlying dysfunction. Uh, so that's, that's important to look at. Um, picky eating, you know, if, if our mouth is not doing what it needs to do, we may gravitate towards easier textures, things that don't crumble and scatter because we don't have good control. So looking at it from that whole perspective, uh, speech issues, obviously you have to use the muscles of your mouth and face to talk. Um, and then, you know, you really want to look back at early feeding issues. So um, one of the big things is breastfeeding issues. Breastfeeding um, is shown to help develop our um, interfacial alignment and growth and um, structure. And if, if a baby couldn't breastfeed for for certain reasons, um, we want to look into that and kind of figure out why that might have been. 
Um, so that's an important piece of the history. Comorbidities that we see, um, lots of cardiovascular stuff, so high blood pressure, um, you know, stroke, headaches, things like that all go along with it. So when your, your muscles are out of balance and your airway is not as developed and your heart has to work harder at night to pump and get oxygen to all of your limbs and all of your organs, that places strain on the heart. Um, we see diabetes along with that whole same, same complex, um, night terrors and parasomnias. So um, sleepwalking and talking often occur in, in people with sleep disorders and related to airway. Growth hormone is actually secreted in those deeper levels of sleep. And so sometimes you'll see um, people that have been to the endocrinologist for, for growth hormone. Is it, is it a problem that they don't have growth hormone? But why don't they have growth hormone coming out? And so just being aware of some of these things is important. So overall health, how does this impact people through a lifespan? So yes, you know, going back all the way to breastfeeding and effectively breastfeeding less developed jaws um, and all the properties, other benefits that breastfeeding gives us. Um, Enlarged tonsils, adenoids, deviated septum because of the changes in the growth and the alignment. Um, tongue tie is definitely a big one. Sometimes lip ties and buckle ties, those can cause all kinds of issues. Um, changes to that oral rest posture, the thumb and pacifier sucking, uh, swallowing, trouble swallowing pills is a big one. Out of pharmacist, uh, she was in her 50s could not swallow pills. And so it just would not go down. And so creating that up and back movement helps the pill go down. And she had a tongue thrust and so she wasn't doing that. Um, not full chewing. If you're not chewing, um, you can get some constipation and digestive issues because our gut is not meant to, to masticate or chew the food for us. Um, so yeah, when you have a higher palate, it takes up nasal space. When you have a compressed space, things don't flow and drain as well. And so you can end up with um, sinus pressure, pain, recurrent sinus affections. Um, when muscles are out of, out of balance, you can get headaches and that pain through the temporalis, um, you know, some TMJ, clicking, popping, things like that all relate to this. So this is an effect over time. So um, I call them breadcrumbs. When I have an adult that I'm seeing, I go all the way back to infancy. And, you know, oftentimes I hear, oh yeah, I did speech therapy in school. Or, um, yeah, my mom could not breastfeed me. I had to take bottles or I had frequent ear infections or I had orthodontics twice. Um, all of these things are little clues and breadcrumbs. And you know, they lead up to an adult that has, you know, quality of life issues, whether it's sleeping or high blood pressure or headaches or uh, jaw, jaw pain, things like that all, all relate and, you know, start early on. So who, if you're um, a professional or a, um, a prospective patient who do you who do you look for um, so it's uh, typically a speech pathologist or a dental hygienist or um, dentist that has myofunctional training there are lots of programs out there that's great education um, and you know I've taken several several coursework with different organizations um, currently the IOM is the only um, certification available at this time. Um, and so you take a four day course, pass a written test, and then um, one of the board of examiners comes out and watches you, um, your therapy skills, and um, you know, you're graded on that. 
once you've passed all of that, that's when you get your certified orofacial myology um, credentials. And so there's an online directory of folks that have, um, that are certified and folks that have taken training. So it just varies on who's in your backyard. So I can't get good results by myself. I think it's really important that we work together. And so who is who who may be involved in the team? And it, it really just depends on the case. Sometimes, you know, the consoles are, are huge and there is no way um, we could get the lips closed because they're having to breathe through their mouth. Um, and so I can't accomplish things unless, you know, the ENT takes care of um, the turbinates or the deviated septum that makes nasal breathing hard or the tonsils or the adenoids. Um, a sleep and airway dentist can definitely help us manage uh, some of those concerns, you know, with different appliances by making more room, um, you know, growing the, the jaws in the right direction, um, providing an appliance that um, helps to open the airway orthodontist, same thing. I always say um, some patients, I, I get asked, do I need to see an orthodontist before I see you? Not always. It depends. It just depends on the case. And I tell people, if I have enough real estate to work, meaning I have enough room in there to accomplish the goals that we're trying to accomplish, then, you know, we can do orthodontia maybe simultaneously or after um, it doesn't have to necessarily be before. Sometimes there's not enough room in there for me to really work and we need to do orthodontics beforehand, you know, maybe some palate expansion or something of that sort. Pediatric dentist is definitely kind of the gatekeeper of children's oral health and um, certainly they provide uh, phrenectomies and um, things for releasing tongue ties um, and work through that realm. Oral surgeon sometimes, um, the sleep physician, uh, really cool. Um, definitely get referrals from sleep physicians. Um, and they're, they're coming along the realm that, hey, not everyone can tolerate a CPAP. Or, you know, I can blow air down their throat all day, but if there's not room, the air doesn't help or go anywhere. So sleep physician is, is a good person to reach out to and talk to. And then... Some of those muscular compensations like that forward head posture uh, or tension patterns, a uh, chiropractor, a craniosacral therapist, or a physical therapist can help us with those. And so I see really good results with that collaborative approach, um, you know, depending on the case and when needed. So who's a good candidate for myofunctional therapy? Generally speaking, <laughs> around three to four um, years old, um, just because they can follow, hopefully they can follow multiple step directions because these are complex skills we're talking about. Um, you know, they can't have an active feeding disorder, meaning like choking, gagging. They can be a picky eater and we can work on, you know, chewing skills and oral control. Um, good support system and motivated and, you know, they're ready. So those are kind of the, the people that do well with myofunctional therapy. Younger than that, we may do more of an adapted program um, or as a speech pathologist and a lactation consultant, I can work on those early oral motor development and breastfeeding and uh, or bottle feeding. if That's what they're working on, having challenges with uh, or um, early feeding skills. So. Right. So that's kind of myofunctional therapy in a nutshell. And um, so, yeah, here's my info. I'm located in Greenville, South Carolina. And um, again, I do courses all over. And um, yeah, I have lots of resources on my website. If you're a potential patient or um, professional looking for more information and more training, so feel free to shoot us an email or reach out and we will try to assist. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Autumn, so much for joining us today and sharing some of your knowledge with us. 
Um, definitely check out her website. She does have a lot of great stuff uh, to offer and a lot of good, exciting courses that can help you expand your knowledge um, as a medical or dental professional. And um, thank you so much again. It has been an honor to have you today with us, uh, Autumn. And uh, we thank you again. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for all you're doing. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks.